Warning, the following video contains visuals and especially audio of people in extreme pain, as well as other content that some may find disturbing. It is not for everyone. 911, where's your emergency? Help me, please, I'm at the Okay, what's <laughs> happening? I'm being attacked by a tiger, please, please, please. You're being attacked by a tiger? Yes, please, at the Naples Zoo. Uh, Are you an employee? What you're listening to right now is absolutely not a prank phone call. If anything, the caller is understating the severity of his current predicament. Because while his screams of unfathomable pain are being transmitted to the 911 operator, River Rosenquist is in fact currently being eaten by a tiger. So how did that come to pass? Well as it turns out, the answer to that question is actually alluded to in the title of this video. River worked as a cleaner at Naples Zoo in Naples, Florida. Now when tiger cages are being cleaned, standard protocol is for the animals to be removed from the area during that time. But today's incident doesn't stem from any sort of oversight on that front, because River Rosenquist simply wasn't that sort of cleaner. He worked for a third party contractor and was tasked with cleaning areas such as the gift shop and visitor bathrooms. Literally no more hazardous of an occupation than if he worked as a janitor for an accounting firm. Where River came into trouble was when he strayed from his assigned area and ventured toward the enclosure that housed an eight-year-old Malayan tiger named Echo, one of the zoo's most prized attractions. And it's clear that River was particularly struck by the majestic animal's allure, as he climbed over the safety fence explicitly designed to keep onlookers at a safe distance from its cage. From there, he approached the cage and shoved his hand and arm through the fencing in order to pet the tiger. As in, run the palm of his hand across the top of its head and then, presumably if all went well, give it a little scratch under the chin or something. But as we now know, all did not go well. And in order to better understand why, there are some important things you need to know about tigers. Tigers are not cat- well, no, actually, they are cats. It's likely where a lot of this sort of confusion originates from. But they're a very different type of cat from the kind that you may see in places such as your house, for instance. Those are house cats, and while they vary in temperament, as a rule of thumb, especially if they're familiar with you, they're good for a cuddle sometimes. That's thanks to a domestication process that's taken place over the course of many thousands of years and that a lot of us are very grateful for. But as with just about any good thing, there were some little hidden downsides that came along with it. Namely in this instance, having received so much affection from these little feline friends over the years has led some to transpose such traits onto other members of their family, such as tigers. Now tigers fall under a category known as big cats. You can probably guess from just a glance where they got that name from. Put a tiger next to a house cat and the size differential is immediately striking. Tigers are way bigger, you can literally spot the difference from a mile away. Now even just right there, you're probably already starting to see the issue with petting one, right? If your house cat was 10 times larger, it would immediately pose more of a danger, simply by virtue of how much damage a scratch or bite could inflict if you were to inadvertently irritate it somehow. But the fact of the matter is, this only scrapes the surface of why trying to pet a tiger is a bad idea. They are extremely dangerous for reasons that go beyond just scale. A lot of animals are big, but not all big animals are ferocious apex predators like tigers very much are. Wherever you find them in the wild, just about everything is running away from them on sight. Be it a deer, moose or buffalo, they all know the last thing you want to be near is the terrifying mouth of a tiger. And it really is terrifying. Within jaws powerful enough to bring on over 1,000 pounds of force, you'll find four canine teeth 2 to 3.5 inches long that can puncture pretty much any type of throat you'd care to name as if it were a pincushion. And while those massive fangs might make the rest of a tiger's teeth look unintimidating by comparison, don't be fooled, they can shred meat to ribbons. Even a tiger's tongue is so coarse as to be capable of stripping flesh 
to the bone. Now, over the years, these sorts of facts have made their way into innumerable nature documentaries. But this, in and of itself, has perhaps helped aid misconceptions as to how dangerous tigers really are. For whenever we see them ripping creatures limb from limb, those creatures are never people, which may in turn lead some to believe that tigers do not enjoy eating people. But this could not be further from the truth. Tigers love eating people. So much so that on the rare occasion a tiger seems to not demonstrate a proclivity toward eating people when given half a chance, it will actually become famous for not eating people. And even then it will probably still wind up trying to eat someone eventually. Sometimes one of the very same people it became famous for not eating in the first place. And once a tiger has decided to start eating you, it's going to be pretty much impossible to get it to stop without outside help, such as River has rather miraculously been able to call for in the midst of all this. Hello, ma'am. Where exactly are you? Are you in the cage? No, I'm just outside of it. He's got my hand. Okay. The tiger has your hand? <laughs> Fortunately, Florida's finest are on the case, and within about five minutes of River first placing the call, Officer John Doe is pulling up to the Naples Zoo entrance. Hey, somebody get bit by a lion? Uh, we don't know. Oh. And that little exchange serves to further underline just how much trouble River is in at the moment. There's never really a good time to have your arm gnawed off through a tiger cage, but because River chose to put himself in that situation well after close of business, no worker at the zoo has any idea what's going on right now, which in turn will slow down the process of them coordinating with Officer Doe. And every second you're being eaten by a tiger is a long second. Just breathe. They're Please, coming to help you. Hurry. Please help. Shoot it. You gotta shoot it. You gotta shoot it. It's gonna eat my. Please just jump the fence and kill it. Oh, no. We have an officer. We have EMS coming to you, okay? Please, it's not fast enough, please. Ah! Ah, please. Oh, my Our God. Our EMS are coming to help you. I can call my boss and see. Yeah, somebody got attacked by the tiger inside, ripped her arm off. Oh, my. Are you serious? Yes, we're serious. You hear all the lights and sirens? This isn't a joke. And as Officer Doe and the zookeeper make their way into the zoo, you start to get a better sense as to why no one on site was alerted to the situation sooner. Because in spite of everything that's happening so very nearby, everything still sounds surprisingly quiet and tranquil where they're standing. At times here, River is screaming at the top of his lungs, but Officer Doe and the zookeeper are still not quite close enough yet for the sound to make it to them. No, we're good. It's inside. Make sure they know where we're going. And unfortunately, we believe when River's first audible scream rings out, it goes unnoticed as Officer Doe happens to be speaking over it. We'll note it on screen when it happens. It's very fleeting. Where would they be able to put their arms through? Right at the fence. Oh. Where's the tiger at? Yeah, you hear? Oh my god. And from there the race is on. And while Officer Doe is about as well prepped as one can be for what he was about to encounter, his first words upon arriving on scene speak to how some sites are difficult to comprehend, no matter how much warning you're given in advance. Oh my god. Is that real? Yeah. Please. Oh my god. Please Echo. help me. Echo. Please help me. <sighs> Literally leaping into action, Officer Doe jumps the safety fence to begin the rescue effort proper. But the scenario he's found himself in isn't one they really train you for in the academy. So there's a bit of an air of what exactly do we do here between him and the zoo workers on scene. For a moment, Officer Doe seems to consider one course of action, but then, showing himself to be soft of heart, reconsiders and searches for an alternative. You got a tranquilizer? No. Poor River just can't catch a break tonight, huh?
But even if tranks were on hand, the truth is nothing would change about the situation. A tranquilizer dart can take 10 to 15 minutes to put out a tiger, which is extra time that River really can't afford right now. He's done well to make it this far, so with no good plan to turn to, the responders make an earnest attempt of implementing a crappy one, shaking the tiger's cage to try and distract it. <laughs> But this only serves to aggravate the tiger further, causing him to clamp down even harder on River's arm. At this point, River offers his own suggestion of how to best remedy the situation. <laughs> and while one can certainly see why this would be the best course of action from River's perspective, there are other factors at play here worth considering before all. There are less than 200 Malayan tigers alive in the wild today. While Floridian moron populations remain very much stable, factors such as those have led some to question whether Officer Doe's decision to shoot Echo, who died toward the back of his cage shortly after the bullet struck him just below the neck, was truly the right call. On one hand, as incomprehensibly stupid as River Rosenquist may be, death by tiger does seem like a bit of a harsh penalty for the crime of being an idiot. On the other hand, death by any means seems like an extremely harsh penalty for the crime of being a tiger. But no, implicit in a police officer's oath is the understanding that they're on Team Human at the end of the day. Officer Doe had to do what he did, god damn it. And the poor guy was clearly shaken up about it too, trying to justify himself to EMS responders who were showing absolutely no sign of questioning him. I don't know I had to shoot it. Tighten that windlass? Yeah. I don't know where I even hit it. Make that as tight as you can find. 170, 160? I don't even know where I hit it. 160? Hey, We tried, man. I'm saying we tried to, to get him off. You did the right thing. I'm not doubting that decision at all. The same sentiments were shared by Naples Zoo President Jack Mulvaner when he spoke to the press about the incident a day later. Uh, their deputy tried to, to distract the tiger first, as you saw from the footage, um, and, and faced a very difficult decision, and we support that decision. You know, I've met with our weapons team and our teams, and, and, and to a person, um, our team said that if they were in those circumstances, given the circumstances, they would have done the same thing. So, very supportive and very happy to have the partnership we have with Coyote County Sheriff's Office. Um, we closed the zoo yesterday to give our staff time to grieve. We're continuing to give them time to grieve. We've arranged for a brief counselor. Um, that's how significant this is. Um, this is a huge impact uh, for all of us. The only change we've made, again, out of respect for our staff is that we're not going to do keeper talks today. Um, and that's just for them. So as a endangered species, uh, protected by the Endangered Species Act, he's in the best protected area he could ever be as a captain, yet we failed this rare, magnificent animal. We are all culpable. So going forward, what is the lesson learned here? Well, I think the lesson learned is that um, you can't 100% you, you can't prevent people from making really, really horrible decisions. Ain't that the truth? And when it comes to the consequences that River Rosenquist would have to face for his really, really horrible decision, a lot of that actually remains unknown. When investigators were able to speak to him post-surgery, he shared that his surgeon had real hopes of saving his arm, which is absolutely incredible if true. Beyond that though, River would not speak further without an attorney present, which funnily enough, in a narrow sense, makes him one of the smartest people to be profiled on this channel. And ultimately, he never was faced with criminal charges. Not for a lack of evidence as to his wrongdoing, all the pieces of the puzzle were there, right down to the open packet of strawberry pop-tarts lying ominously in the basket of his bicycle, parked right next to the safety fence he jumped. It's just that there really was nothing on the books that applied to this very specific situation. But perhaps that's for the best. Nothing will bring Echo back, and it's not as if any further penalty is needed for us to be confident that River regrets his decision. 
Sometimes the most enlightened approach to a situation like this is to just let those affected go through their grieving process and put a close to the chapter without a quest for vengeance dragging things out further. From there we can all just hope that the whole grisly, tragic affair will serve as a cautionary tale that ensures nothing like it will ever happen again. Uh, hi. Nacho, what were you doing in the cage? So this is another example of someone coming out worse for wear after trying to pet a tiger. Totally different guy, totally different zoo. Still Florida though. Damn near Naples in fact. Hypothetically, if this incident had taken place directly after River Rosenquist's misadventure, Officer Doe would have been able to have been on scene at the Animal Sanctuary in Wooten's Everglades airboat tours in well under an hour. But of course, it didn't take place directly after that. This happened almost three whole months later, on March 22nd of 2022. Nacho, like River before him, worked in a completely non-tiger facing role at the facility in question. He was a mechanic. It isn't known exactly what he was working on just before he decided to make his really, really horrible decision. But whatever it was, must have been near the tiger cage, as he noticed one of the caretakers was feeding an 18 year old Siberian tiger named Daisy. Now even just feeding a tiger can have a lot of hazards associated with it, which is why anyone authorised to do so has to first be trained in a variety of safety measures. We won't bore you with all the details, but they mostly boil down to having a durable barrier between all parts of your body and the tigers at all times. This absolutely precludes entering the tiger's cage. But Nacho was not trained in such safety measures, so he did enter the tiger's cage, picking up a leftover piece of chicken from the ground and throwing it to Daisy while the caretaker repeatedly asked him to stop. But perhaps she wasn't asking loudly enough, because soon Nacho was raising his freshly chicken smeared hand in order to pat Daisy on top of her head with it. But Nacho's hand never made it to the top of Daisy's head. She had it clenched inside of her powerful jaws before he could get in so much as one measly stroke. Also like River before him, this development led Nacho to quickly sour on the whole experience as well as the tiger herself, and he soon began swinging his free arm toward Daisy to try and fend her off. But it too would never reach its intended destination. For it was at this point that a second 15 year old Bengal tiger named Daruba emerged from god knows where and bit down on Nacho's other arm. Standing in that cage with two tigers for arms, Nacho surely must have thought he was a goner. I'm a fucking baby. But fortunately, unlike River before him, he had at least managed to get himself into this situation while someone else was around, and the caretaker was able to spray Daisy and Daruba with a hose, causing them to cut their meal short and release Nacho before retreating to the back of their cage. They were never harmed. Nacho, on the other hand, was a little banged up. The top of the middle finger's missing. Hey, the top of the middle finger's missing. Yep. Where's the? I don't know, but the top's missing. Hold on. Lay down. Is the animal? Is she? She's in the cage. She probably ate it more than anything. She doing what a tiger does. Yeah. All right. Let's get that one. I don't think that's enough to. They're not going to reattach it. No. No, no, don't anyone look for it. Okay. It's not enough. Okay. Nope. Don't even think about it. Okay. So the search for the tip of Nacho's middle finger was called off before it ever really began. But hey, if two tigers try to eat you at the same time and you come out of it looking like you had some sort of woodshop accident, you've done pretty well for yourself, all things considered. And after he was released from hospital, Nacho was even gracious enough to grant an interview to the press, providing a rare insight into what drives actions such as his. I'm so crazy. So in terms of wrapping up with lessons learned, people try to pet tigers sometimes. That's just a thing that happens now, especially in Florida, and from the looks of it will continue to happen. When it comes to prevention, well honestly this video has sort of exhausted our explanations as to why it's a bad idea. It's times like these you wish a nice news anchor lady could just come along and bring the key message home as elegantly as possible. Just a reminder people, do not stick your hand into yeah. a cage with a tiger in it. These adult tigers, they are wild animals. Nice.